Time is money, especially when it comes to project management. This adage rings especially true when you're tasked with overseeing a project's timeline and resources. But how do we go about creating a comprehensive plan that maps out the tasks, activities, milestones and resources needed to complete a project within a set time frame? This is where project scheduling comes into play. Project scheduling is like setting up the DNA of your project. It's the blueprint that guides the project from start to finish, ensuring everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Two techniques have proven to be particularly effective in project scheduling, the Gantt chart and the critical path method. The Gantt chart, a visual tool, helps you track tasks, activities and their durations over time. On the other hand, the critical path method is a technique used to identify the longest sequence of dependent tasks in a project, helping to determine the shortest possible project duration. Mastering these two methods can make your project run smoother, save time, and increase efficiency. First up, let's dive into the world of Gantt charts. Named after its inventor, Henry Gantt, a Gantt chart is a visual representation of a project schedule. It's like a timeline for your project, showing tasks, their durations, and the dependencies between them in a way that's easy to understand and communicate. Let's break down the key components of a Gantt chart. We start with the task list. This is your to-do list for the project. It contains all the tasks or activities that need to be completed for the project to be successful. Then we have the timeline. This is the horizontal axis of your Gantt chart. It's usually broken down into units of time, like days, weeks or months, depending on the scale of your project. Each task from your list is represented by a bar on this timeline. The length of the bar corresponds to the duration of the task. So, a longer bar means a longer task, and a shorter bar means a shorter task. Simple, right? Now, let's talk about dependencies. In any project, some tasks can't start until others have been completed. These relationships are indicated by arrows connecting the bars. For example, if you're building a house, you can't start painting until the walls are up. So, the painting task would have an arrow pointing to it from the wall construction task. Lastly, we have milestones. These are significant points or events in the project that are worth highlighting. They could be things like the project kickoff, the delivery of a key component, or the completion of the project. So why use a Gantt chart? Well, there are several benefits. For one, it gives you a clear visual of your project timeline and dependencies. This can help you identify critical tasks and milestones and keep track of your progress. Secondly, it's a great communication tool. You can use it to keep your team and stakeholders informed about what's happening, what's coming up, and how the project is progressing. Lastly, a Gantt chart can be a useful tool for adjusting schedules and resources as needed. If a task is taking longer than expected, or if a resource becomes unavailable, you can see the impact on the rest of the project and make adjustments accordingly. Of course, like any tool, Gantt charts have their limitations. They can become complex and difficult to read for larger projects, and they don't always show the amount of resources required for each task. But with careful planning and management, they can be a powerful tool in your project management toolkit. So, as you can see, Gantt charts provide a clear visual roadmap for your project, helping you to stay on track and communicate effectively with stakeholders. Now that we've covered what a Gantt chart is, you're probably wondering how to create one. So, let's dive right into it. Creating a Gantt chart is a straightforward process that involves a few key steps. Firstly, we need to identify all the tasks required to complete the project. These tasks form the backbone of your Gantt chart and should be as detailed as possible. Keep in mind, the more granular your tasks, the more accurate your Gantt chart will be. Next, we estimate the duration of each task. This can be done based on historical data, expert judgment or other estimation techniques. Remember, these are only estimates. They can always be adjusted as the project progresses and more information becomes available. Now, we're ready to determine task dependencies. These are the relationships between tasks that dictate the order in which they need to be completed. For example, if you're building a house, you can't start painting the walls before they're built. Identifying these dependencies is crucial to avoid potential bottlenecks in your project timeline. Once we've got our tasks, durations and dependencies, it's time to plot them on the Gantt chart. 
Each task is represented by a bar, with the length of the bar indicating the duration of the task. The position of the bar on the timeline reflects when the task will take place, taking into account any dependencies. Finally, we mark the milestones. These are significant points or events in the project, such as the completion of a major phase, the approval of a key deliverable, or the project's end date. Milestones are typically represented by diamond shapes on a Gantt chart, and they serve as key indicators of project progress. They give everyone involved in the project a clear idea of what has been achieved and what lies ahead. And voila! You've just created a Gantt chart. It's a powerful tool that can greatly assist in managing your projects. And remember, a Gantt chart is not set in stone. It should evolve and adapt with your project, reflecting the dynamic nature of project management. Next, let's explore the Critical Path Method, another essential project management tool. Often referred to as CPM, it's a project scheduling technique that helps project managers identify the longest stretch of dependent activities and compute the shortest possible project duration. But how does it work? The Critical Path Method operates in a few discernible steps. First, you identify all the tasks necessary to complete the project, along with their dependencies. Following this, you estimate the duration of each task, drawing upon historical data, expert judgment, or other estimation techniques. Next, you construct a network diagram. This is essentially a visual representation of the task's sequence and their dependencies. With the diagram in place, you can now calculate the early and late start times, as well as the early and late finish times for each task. This is based on their dependencies and durations. The final step is to determine the critical path. This is the longest path through the network diagram. Tasks on this path have zero slack or float, meaning that any delay in these tasks will push the project's completion date. The critical path method serves a crucial purpose in project management. It identifies which tasks are critical to the project duration and which are not. This helps managers prioritize tasks and allocate resources wisely. It's also an excellent tool for planning, scheduling, and controlling complex projects with numerous interdependent tasks. However, it's important to note that the critical path method does have its limitations. It assumes that task durations are fixed and doesn't account for resource dependencies. It's also heavily reliant on accurate task duration estimates, making it susceptible to errors or changes in the project scope. Despite these potential limitations, the critical path method remains a powerful tool in the project manager's toolkit. With careful implementation and diligent monitoring, it can significantly enhance project efficiency and success. The critical path method is a robust project management tool that can help you identify the most efficient way to complete your project. Now, let's put the critical path method into action. We begin with the identification of tasks. Essentially, we need to list all the activities necessary to complete the project. This could range from designing a website's layout to testing its functionality, depending on the project at hand. No task is too small to include as even the minutest detail can impact the project timeline. Next, we estimate durations. This is where we take each task and assign an estimated completion time. Remember, these are just estimates. They're based on past experiences, expert judgment, or even educated guesses. The aim is not to get an exact number, but to have a reasonable approximation that aids in planning. Now we move on to the construction of a network diagram. This is where we map out the sequence of tasks and their dependencies. Imagine it as a roadmap of sorts, showing how each task is connected and the order in which they should be completed. This step gives us a clear picture of the project flow and highlights the interdependencies of tasks. With our network diagram in place, we then calculate the early and late start and finish times for each task. This is a crucial step as it gives us a time frame for each task and helps us understand the flexibility we have in scheduling. Finally, we determine the critical path. This is the longest path through the network diagram and represents the shortest possible duration to complete the project. Any delay in tasks on this path directly impacts the project's completion time, hence the term critical. Identifying this path allows us to focus our resources and attention on these crucial tasks. So there you have it. By following these steps, we've successfully applied the critical path method to our project. It's not just about finding the fastest route to completion, it's about understanding our project better, 
identifying potential bottlenecks, and strategically managing our resources. With the critical path method, you can optimize your project schedule and manage potential risks more effectively. And there you have it, two powerful project management tools at your disposal. The Gantt chart, with its visual representation of tasks, timelines and dependencies, offers a clear view of your project's trajectory and progress. It helps you identify critical tasks, communicate with stakeholders, and adjust your project schedule as needed. On the other hand, the Critical Path Method, or CPM, allows you to identify the longest sequence of dependent tasks, helping you determine the shortest possible duration for project completion. It's an excellent tool for managing project constraints, optimizing schedules, and identifying tasks that can be delayed without affecting the overall project timeline. Both techniques, each with their unique strengths, can significantly enhance your project management skills, providing clarity, efficiency, and control over your projects. So give these methods a try in your next project. You might be surprised at how much they can help streamline your processes and enhance your project management skills.